Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's build is looking at the new Vets Calibre Exotic Glaive and how it is currently one of the best Exotic Glaives to own. The current Exotic Glaive in game have their ups and downs and except for the Titan Cloud Exotic, they haven't seen much use outside the Witch Queen. However, we have had some new Glaives introduced this season and the Vets Calibre is one of those weapons you don't want to leave out on your to-do list. The ability to get a free overshield for you and allies is incredibly strong for today's environments, but you can make this even more effective when combined with Winter's Skill and avoid subclass. With a 275% damage buff to Glaives at times 5 Winter's Skill, Devour on demand, a 15% debuff being applied to targets, and near infinite free overshields being supplied, you can create a setup that will increase viability in Legendary or Master content by 100%. It's simple, but easily one of the best setups to use and own anywhere in game. To start, you're going to want to have Feed the Void so each time you defeat a target with Void abilities, you get Devour. Then you want Charge your Gods that each time you place your Rifts down and hit a target, you will send out a Void Soul that will drain enemies and grant you Grenade and Health Energy while also weakening targets. Although Rifts will be used for mainly healing when things get bad and using Charge your Gods will garner us a lot of benefits once in action, I would advise you to use Chaos Accelerant as an in-between depending on the activity and difficulty. This is because if you intend to play endgame with this, for example, then using Child of the Old Gods with a healing riff makes more sense for longer survivability. If you feel confident in your skills though and can make Feed the Void work for you, then using the Chaos Accelerant and going full damage mode can also have its benefits. There is no right or wrong answers as long as you are using the Valor as the main stepping stone for the build. Fragments used, Echo Persistence where Void buffs apply to you have increased duration, Echo Vigilance where defeating a target where shields are down grant you temporary overshields, Echo of Undermining provides a 15% grenade debuff, and Echo of Exchange where many final blows grant grenade energy. Out of the form, Echo Persistence and Exchange are the two priority fragments to have, as Persistence will increase the duration of overshields applied to us via Vex Calibre while Exchange allows us a quick way to build up grenade energy without the need of high investments. This is important as I intend to use magnetic grenades for the low cooldown rate and the ability to apply a debuff which, all in all, will also trigger devour for me much faster than normal. This here is where your exotic will lean into fully branching itself out and providing the user the best experience available. For the mods and stats section, resilience and discipline are the two main stats to invest in with a tier 7 being the lowest and tier 10 being the highest. Now, as we intend to use our grenades quite a bit in the build for stun fights and activate into Valor, this stat can go one of many ways thanks to the Echo Exchange Fragment. Do remember that the point of the build is to enhance the effectiveness of staying alive longer in PvE environments, especially in higher endgame content if you ever wish to adventure there. At a tier 7 discipline, this will be enough for a standard passive region, which is all that you need to focus on. From here, having the Grenade Kicks up mod times 2, Innovation and Bomber mod will be enough for the overall finality of the grenade side of things. I would advise you to also add on the Assets to Assets mod for Super Energy Return as it's a nice way of building up Super when you need it most. After that, here are the armor charges you should then have. Charged Up and Stacks and Stacks will be giving you a total of 4 charges upon collecting an aura power. This will lead into the Kickstart mod so that your Discipline stat refresh occurs more often. But at the same time, you can add on the Void Surge mod for that 25% Void Weapon buff within the given time map provided. Although this will clash with Kickstart mods, this is fine as long as you balance it out correctly, such as using your grenades first and then using the Surge mod straight after. Also, you should be using your grenades on bosses to mini bosses to even mages at best, as everything else within the build is going to be focused around the strength of the Glaive alone. Now, for creating orbs of power, having the Void Cypher mod or even the Kinetic version will help with creating orbs of power more often as required for sustaining the armor charges set up. You may want to add on the Firepower or Heavy Hand mod depending on which two abilities you intend to use the most, so flexibility here is available for you to pick. Now, lastly, the weapons being used will of course be the Vex Calibre Exotic, although we will also be using our Primary as best as possible. Let's start with the Primary as this can be flexible for the user on their end. If you can get a primary with Osmosis on it, then you can benefit from the Void Surge mod for that extra Void damage buff being applied. If not, then I would recommend you try and get the 7th Seraph Carbine AR with Reconstruction and Target Lock. 
A vastly superior version compared to the olden version we are familiar with is a 450 precision frame AR and quite stable for mid long range fights, which will be helpful when using our rifts or when we can't use our glaive more often. The following role is great for sustained DPS for long duration of fights, and although I would say it isn't ideal for boss DPS as a weapon, the damage being pulled off can be relied upon when you need it most. It has been very effective with taking out minor to major enemies in legend content, and is worth the investment to keep for many builds in mind for its simplicity. The main exotic though we'll be using is of course the Vexcalibur exotic from the Lightfall expansion. This exotic is fantastic if you want to play as a team supporter by providing overshields to you and your allies on demand there and then. Although it does state that it has no shield duration, it does have a bit you can use, but it's not something you can fully rely on. But that's not what the strength of the exotic is. The exotic trait, Perpetual Loophole, states that it grants users increased melee damage and will also refresh overshield upon getting kills while having the overshield active. This means you can use the glaive as both a big damage dealer and team supporter all in one with little effort. The ease of use with the glaive and how you can pair it with pretty much any other subclass you like means that if you want to play a supporter role but still do good damage, then the option is there. Overall, this build is incredible for survivability. Shoot once, block until a small bit of overshield is applied, then get melee killed, get the max overshield. This is the only thing in game that can refresh the health of existing overshields and just for that reason it's an incredible weapon to use. Now you may say just use repulsive brace for that, but this here requires a little effort to trigger it. As long as you block for that few seconds and then get the kill, you'll block overshield straight away. As such a build in today's content is useful considering how powerful most enemies feel now. You have everything at your disposal from constant healing to increased melee damage per kills made. This should make it powerful enough for you to use this in legendary content for example, or even mass and nightfalls and raids alike. However, the build won't make you unkillable if you ever use it in GM or contest mode, simply because the income and damage isn't easy to avoid. Using this in the new raid on the first part allowed me to see just how well the build does, as I received all types of enemies to face, which included tormentors and champions. From it, I was able to do pretty well against all of them and even completely nullified champions to tormentors who would usually require a bit more effort involved. Now as long as you keep attacking and keep your main abilities going, then it becomes much harder for enemies to outright kill you. But this also has a catch to it, where most enemies can take away your shield within a few hits or less, and then you'll need to reapply it all over again. From what I've learned, if you want to be successful with it, then forget everything you know about using glaives and use it as a sort of powered extended melee, as that's the best way forward. Play stupid and even a build can help you, but play smart and the build will make most content including lost sectors a cakewalk. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, but at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this, then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.